And let me start that right now. So the first order of business is to orient all of you to the mute button on the GoToMeeting control panel, and please mute yourself if you haven't already done so. And also for those of you who have called in on a phone, please mute yourselves on your phone. And now that you've muted yourself, I also wanna invite you to unmute yourself at any point if you would like to ask a question or make a comment. And if you prefer to write your question or comments, there's also a chat tab on the control panel that allows you to ask questions through written text. We do track um, who is in attendance, so please take a look at the attendees tab uh, on the control panel to see if your name is not listed. Um, if it is not listed, please write your name and all the names of those who are in attendance. Okay. I'm going to get started and jump into the content. So on the agenda for the program updates today is to welcome new drop-off sites, to give a carpet recycling update, touch on our convenient collection goal, and we have Peter Mack here from Gigantic Idea Studio, who will talk about some of CARE's marketing, education, and outreach efforts. So currently, we have 135 carpet recycling drop-off sites throughout California, serving all 58 counties in California. We added 39 drop-off sites in 2022, a record year for establishing drop-off sites, 30 in Southern California, and nine in Northern California. That is a 38% increase in our total number of drop-off sites. So we'd like to welcome our newest drop-off site. It's been quite a busy few months and we're very happy to announce 18 new sites since the end of October. And many of these new drop-off sites are flooring retail stores in, um, that are based in Southern California. There are too many to announce right now, but we welcome you to the program and to the webinar. I also want to take a moment because we are thrilled to report and announce that CARE has achieved the convenient collection goal of one public drop-off site per 500,000 people in each county. So I want to thank you to all of our new brand new drop-off sites and our long-standing drop-off sites that helped make that happen. Our drop-off sites are becoming more and more convenient and we're feeling good about that. So here's a look at some of the numbers. Here's a bar graph showing the number of carpet recycling drop-off sites over time. You can see we started with six sites in 2012 and grown to 135 at the end of 2022. And here you can see a number of container swaps that occurred each year. We had 829 container swaps in 2021, and we've had 1,197 swaps at the end of 2022. So now this chart shows total pounds of carpet collected by care drop-off sites by all of you folks. So in 2021, we collected 12.5 million pounds, and this year increased that by 28% to reach 16 million pounds. I have one more line graph that shows California's total carpet recycling rate. The goal for 2022 was 27%. We surpassed that goal and hit a 32% recycling rate. This is carpet collected at both at drop -off site, public drop-off sites and at private collection points. And if you would like to know how the recycling rate is calculated, please take a look at CARE's December blog on our website, which explains how that is, that is calculated. And really across the board, we are feeling really pleased to see this increase in diversion in public access to drop-off sites and innovation in carpet processing. So nice job.
Okay, back to the agenda. We have a visit from Peter Mack. Peter, are you here? I am. Hi, Lisa. Can you hear me? I can. I can hear you. It's great to have you. Um, Peter works with Gigantic Idea Studio, who is our marketing, education, and outreach partner. And he is here to share some of the work they do to keep people informed about carpet recycling and how that works to support drop-off sites. So, Peter, let me know when you'd like me to advance the slides. Okay, great. Thanks for the introduction, Lisa. Uh, again, my name is Peter Mack, and I'm a, an associate with Gigantic Idea Studio. Um, for those not familiar with Gigantic, we're an Oakland-based communication agency that specializes in environmental outreach campaigns. Um, we're the marketing and outreach contractors that support CARE throughout the state. And so many of you will probably recognize us for signage and informational documents that support all the good work that you all are doing and supporting CARE's mission. Uh, next slide, please. So supporting CARE's mission and, and the role that uh, we play. Um, our one-on-one -on -one phone calls and in-person events are combined with hard copy mailings, emails, um, and newspaper and radio ads. Um, and they're all kind of geared at helping flooring professionals, uh, and in some cases, the general public understand that uh, carpet is recyclable. Um, and we emphasize that it's recyclable when it is properly prepared and brought to a care approved drop off site. Um, as you've seen, we provide signage and sheets for drop off sites, and we also stay busy communicating with the installers and retailers um, who should be bringing their carpet and tear out to your, uh, to your sites. Um, we utilize drop off site maps that help educate um, installers and retailers. And those maps exist in both digital and print versions, as many as, as many of you know. Um, we generally do a quarterly printing of the hard copy maps, and the digital map, which is on the CARE website, um, is updated in real time and can be accessed at any time. Um, just want to draw attention to that map um, as we often direct installers to view it. Um, so it's important to have accurate information on it. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, uh, hours and fees uh, related to your site. Um, so Here. just a note. I'm just checking in. Do you need me to advance the slides? Uh, not just, I will in just okay, a second. Great. Sorry <laughs> about that. No problem. Thanks. Um, so yeah, if there are any updates that need to be made on the maps, uh, please let Lisa or Jared know. Um, Lisa, go ahead and advance the slide, please. Oh. There we go. So after a site is onboarded, uh, we follow up with drop-off sites with um, what we call collateral. That's the informational documents and then necessary signage. Um, after a drop-off site is operational and has had some time to develop a carpet recycling procedure, uh, our outreach team then begins to promote your site. So what do I mean by that? Um, we're a team that works throughout the entire state um, to provide in-person and over-the-phone education uh, and outreach support. So in short, we're supporting you all with educational and pro promotional resources and promoting the services to retailers and installers in your service area. So I'll speak a little bit more on that shortly. Um, next slide, please. So before I get into that, just wanted to provide some background on where we are today. Uh, we began uh, education and outreach to just carpet retailers, and we now engage with all flooring retailers throughout the state. So just a small distinction to make there. Um, we now are, are working with uh, retailers that are only dealing with hard surfaces, so vinyl, laminates, and so forth, in addition to carpet retailers. Um, we did that um, in recognition that, you know, just because a store isn't selling carpet, they might be dealing with carpet tear out. So currently there are over 2000 retailer stores in the state um, that's seen on the image on the left with all the orange pins. And as Lisa just mentioned, there are 135 current care drop off sites. That's the image on the right, the green pins. 
Um, one of our goals is to educate on the services that you all offer, as I mentioned. Um, we offer information and education as it pertains to care. So whether that's about your drop-off site or whether it's about current assessment, assessment fees, um, how to properly invoice, uh, hauling services might, that might be offered, um, we provide all of that. And I know that some on the call are both a drop-off site and a retailer, so we'll be familiar with both aspects of that outreach. Um, just one additional word about flooring installers. We also work at installer supply houses um, to provide education. These are typically in-person events and are at the dozens of locations throughout the state where flooring in installers and contractors go for their tools and other supplies. Um, next slide, please. So again, after, after a site's onboarded, we'll follow up with drop-off site um, signage and collateral um, for you all to use. After a site's operational, um, we begin again, like I said, to promote the site. Um, in some instances, we'll gear our education towards the general public. So that includes homeowners, um, property managers, and generally trying to get the word out to everyone um, that carpet is recyclable. Um, so just pictured in this slide is a, a billboard that we recently did in Sacramento, Sa the Sacramento area. And on the right, a newspaper insert that we did in conjunction with um, the mattress resource, excuse me, the mattress recycling council, paint care and call to recyclable. That's the organization that deals with battery recycling. Um, and the idea behind this insert was that we were um, promoting and educating the public about products that are not widely known to be recyclable. Um, so just in short, we provide you all with educational and promotional resources um, and retailers and installers in your service area. Next slide, please. So in addition to the where, um, you know, providing education on where the drop-off sites exist, uh, we work to educate on um, how carpet should be prepared and loaded. Um, as we all know, dirty loads can be troublesome at best and delay carpet recycling, and at worst, they force recyclers to send their entire loads to the landfill. Um, so we provide, again, these informational sheets that are seen on the right um, in conjunction with the calls and visits that we make. Um, so again, on the right, it's just a typical installer sheet that we that we will utilize and that outlines the proper steps to prepare carpet and it's both in English and Spanish. So we're really trying to avoid dirty loads, whether it's wet carpet, um, carpet that's um, combined with tack strip or C and D debris, um, and then also educating on how to properly load containers. So next slide, please. Um, and this is my last slide. Just the takeaway is that we're providing um, the word high and low to retailers and installers about your service offerings. So to ensure a smooth operation of everything, we want to encourage you all to make sure that everyone on your staff knows and is comfortable about talking um, about carpet recycling. Uh, it's very important that everyone on staff and operations knows that. Um, carpet is recycled at your facility because um, we sometimes hear from installers that we refer to your site that um, you know they speak with someone and they say uh, you know we don't recycle carpet here so just uh, uh, again just a reminder to make sure everyone on staff knows that carpet is recycled um, and we're here to support you with that if you need resources to educate staff we can assist um, the easiest way is to check out the services page on the drop-off site uh, section of the CARE website. Um, and I would point out in particular the section on the website that includes how to promote your site with a press release, social media, and a video that's helpful for both existing and new staff. Um, and other resources exist as well. Um, like I said, if you're, if you're receiving dirty loads, or just having a hard time getting the word out about carpet recycling at your site, um, please let uh, your care staff rep know, that's Lisa or Jared, um, and we can follow up. So with that, um, thanks everyone, and I'll, I'll turn it back over to Lisa. Thank you, Peter. 
Does anybody have any questions they would like to ask Peter? Uh, this is Grant Dunn from Del Norte. Hi, Grant. Hi. Hey, I, I um, wanted to ask Peter, he mentioned something about an agency um, that uh, handles uh, batteries. I know it's not about carpet, but uh, what was that agency's name again? Uh, they're called Call 2 Recycle um, Call and then the Numeric 2 and then Recycle. All right, thank you. All right, anybody else? Well, thanks again, Peter, and thanks to all the folks at Gigantic Idea Studio. I appreciate it. Thanks, Lisa. So I want to take a moment because Peter referred to the drop-off site service page. So I also wanted to just remind everyone of all the resources that are there, um, including frequently asked questions for drop-off site personnel and the media kit that Peter referenced with downloadable images and templates for website or social media um, in English or Spanish. So I'm sure most of you are very familiar, but there are a lot of resources that maybe you've never used. So take a look and see what's there to support you. Okay, I'm getting back to the agenda and drop off sites operations. So let's talk about carpet reuse. So the three R's, reuse, reduce, and recycle. So CARE is actively working to expand and encourage carpet reuse. In this photo, one of our drop-off sites installed used carpet tile in their training room. This project, along with many others, contributed towards meeting our reuse goals. So if you know of a business, organization, or an individual who would like to install used carpet tile, please reach out to your local Habitat for Humanity or Restore, or reach out to CARE and we can help locate tile for your project. So our reuse goal is 2 million pounds a year. The final, year in, the final year in invoices are still being tallied, but so far we've increased reuse by 150% since 2020 and reuse over 1.9 million pounds of carpet in 2022. All right, back to the agenda and on to an update on processing products and market development with Rob Teese. CARES Market Development Manager. Rob, are you here? I am. Great. How's everybody? Great. Ready? I, we Great. are. Thanks for talking with us. Um, so Rob is CARES Market Development Manager, and he is here, here to give us an update on carpet recycling and product development news. So let me know when you'd like me to advance a slide, Rob. Uh, well, Jim, thanks. Uh, Happy New Year uh, to everyone, and hopefully everybody's New Year's off to a great start. I know CARES uh, is, uh, and you can see from the, the numbers that you just went over, Lisa, it's great to see that. Um, you can go ahead and advance the first uh, slide, thanks. So just a real brief uh, discussion here about some of our products, and you know, all this uh, you know, material is derived from your locations. So. Uh, what you're looking at is a properly loaded truck. Uh, do we see that? Um, rarely um, to this level. Obviously, this would take a long time to do, but it's a target that we try to achieve. Uh, you can go ahead and advance. So just basically uh, what happens, these trailers uh, or roll-off bins are, are transported and they're sorted with ID, uh, a refractive uh, piece of equipment that's handheld that shoots a array of energy and then it refracts back and it reads and tells what type of fiber type it is. So it could be a nylon, a polypropylene, a PET, uh, and then sometimes even wool will come across, which uh, unfortunately we don't have a recycling option for. Uh, then the lower picture to the right there, uh, it shows somebody collecting or transferring or culling through and grading uh, carpet tiles uh, where they're sorted um, for either recycling if they're too dirty or too worn or for reuse and they're graded into three primary A, B and C grades. Um, 
kind of laborious um, and you know we do support it with uh, subsidies to to help offset the cost of the labor that's associated with this go ahead in advance next slide thanks so all all recycling uh, for carpet uh, materials carpet tiles commercial broadloom starts with a mechanical process and what that is is basically a, a large shredder that shreds it up uh, into manageable pieces, and then it goes through a series of screens. Uh, some of the oversize gets returned to the shredder, and then it uh, gets separated into various uh, uh, constituents. So you have the face fiber uh, from the top of the carpet, then you've got a, polypro a polypropylene mesh, and then you've got the calcium carbonate uh, with a small amount of SBR latex, which acts as the glue for the carpet fiber. Um, go ahead and advance. So this is a quick loop. Uh, this is coming straight from uh, the primary grinder or shredder. And you can see the various pieces of uh, carpet all shredded up. So it's gonna trickle down and then start the screen uh, phase. And then like some of those larger pieces will be re-entrained and uh, broken down even further. Uh, there's various lines that take the calcium carbonate out, uh, the polypropylene uh, and then the face fibers. Go ahead and advance. So the next process uh, for a lot of the material uh, and an up and coming, and I'm sure everybody's heard it, uh, chemical recycling. Uh, some people call it advanced recycling or even molecular recycling. And uh, what they do is they densify this material um, and send it to a, another uh, company like a Eastman, a large chemical company who has um, a organic acid or enzymatic depolymer process uh, that further breaks these uh, materials down. You can go ahead and advance it once. Um, so go back one more, go back. Can you go back again to the uh, molecular? Let's talk a little bit about this because this is big in the circular economy. Um, what we're primarily seeing is nylon and, and you guys might be familiar with Aquafil. Uh, they have a plant in Sylvania and they have a recycling operation over in Phoenix, Arizona. So they shred a process much like what you saw and then they have extrusion capabilities where they melt the fiber and put it through a dye and then pelletize it much like what you see in that hand there. Then they package that up and it goes over uh, sea uh, and is delivered to their plant in Slovenia where they further break it down uh, into the basic uh, molecular structures. Um, and now you can kind of advance to the next portion. So some of the raw fiber that's undensified uh, makes its way into synthetic wood siding uh, or planks. Um, and what they do is a, it's a double process here. They have an inner core and an outer core and they can take a mix of fibers, which is really interesting. And they uh, apply uh, temperature and heat and fuse the elements together. And then they custom color these um, boards to fit whatever you know uh, your housing color or your decking color needs. Go ahead, next slide. Then uh, you guys might be familiar with some commercial broadloom. Uh, they put a small fiber pad underneath that. Uh, help with um, uh, floor uh, cushioning and for sound deadening. Uh, so a lot of the face fiber makes its way into materials like that. Go ahead and next slide. And so these are transition floor mats. So wheelchair access, um, uh, things to, to get you over a hurdle, a, a step. Um, and what it goes in this is a uh, PC4, and that's the calcium carbonate that's been liberated from uh, the carpeting, and it actually makes the rubber more resilient and more tough. Um, go ahead and, and uh, advance. And this is an interesting product. Uh, it's called Absorbs Well. Uh, it's made uh, up in Chico, uh, Northern California, and it uh, consists of PC4, 100%, and um, it is uh, not an absorbent, but an adsorbent. Um, it's very fine, and the oils and spills adhere to the surface uh, and not uh, within the pores of the structure of the calcium carbonate. So the interesting um, product, is, it's new, and uh, we have high hopes for it uh, being utilized, uh, you know, with CalRecycle and other uh, California agencies. Uh, please advance. 
And then of course we've got uh, a new products list and this is updated uh, all the time online. It is on our website and it's always good uh, to go and check it out and see what products are currently being manufactured uh, using um, carpet derived uh, products. Next. And that's what, that's what I look like right there. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions? No questions? Thanks, Rob. I have a question or a comment anyway. Sure. I, you know, with this chemical recycling, which is newer in the carpet recycling world, you know, we're understanding oftentimes people um, reference uh, um, things like auto parts that we can make out of post-consumer carpet. But now with chemical recycling or molecular recycling, it's almost mm -hmm. like the material is turning back into a virgin uh, polymer. And the the potentials of new products are, are will be interesting to see um, what happens uh, in the in the world of carpet recycling in the future. Yeah, not just carpet recycling, but plastics in general. I mean, uh, you know, auto shredder residue, which is huge. Uh, it's a commingled mix of uh, materials after they shred cars up. Uh, they're starting to send that into the uh, chemical processing, and it striates out. And they're able to extract, uh, you know, the basic elements, like you said, the, the polymers, the monomers, uh, and they're able to go back into new um, plastic materials. So it's um, that's where the circularity comes in, you know. So it's great that people are starting to design on the front end and make uh, products knowing that they're going to be an end of life one time and that they will need to be recycled. So uh, the chemical recycling, it, it's it's very very interesting for the future i can't wait to see where it all goes um there's a, there's also a waste stream that is associated with it a lot of people have some concerns about that um so that will uh, kind of that's kind of the gray area right now so i'm looking to learn a little bit more about those residues and how we handle that how do we manage those because there is a waste as with everything uh, and nothing's 100% perfect, but um, I think we're moving in the right direction in the in the chemical recycling realm. Thanks, and there's Rob. A, uh, hey, Rob. There's a question here I see um, from Flanny's uh, Flanny's uh, floor covering on what happens to wool. I'm actually working on a possible outlet, but uh, in the past it's lower than you know one and a half percent on what we see in our landfills incoming. Uh, it's high, uh, you know, high cost. A lot of people don't do that anymore, uh, and it lasts for a long, long time. Um, there may be some outlets uh, in the near future. I am working with uh, Circular Polymers on that, and um, I hope to uh, be able to accept that. But like I said, it's it's probably 1.5 or less on the overall volume of what we see as far as PET, uh, nylon, and polypropylene. So not much there yet. Thanks, Rob. Jared, were you mm -hmm. going to contribute something? Yeah, hey everyone. Um, I was actually just gonna flag that, that um, Colin, I assume it's Colin at Franny's, uh, wanted to see what happens with wool carpet, but Rob was on top of it. Thanks, Jared. All right, any other questions for Rob before we move on? Thanks everyone, I appreciate it. Um, and thank you, Lisa. Great job. Thanks, Rob. All right, um, we're gonna move on. And we're in the final stretch here with a few operational reminders. Well, there's a lot of water and snow out there right now. And uh, just a reminder that wet carpet is not recyclable. So please do not allow wet carpet to be put into the collection containers. If carpet is wet to the touch, it should go to landfill. And does anybody have any questions about that? Now here are two great looking photos of recyclable carpet. And also just a reminder that broad loom carpet should be dry, debris free and rolled separately from padding. Carpet tile should also be dry and free of heavy glue and debris palletized, stacked, wrapped, and strapped, and no higher than four feet. Okay, next on the agenda, feedback and best practices, and we're gonna start with acknowledgements. 
So we always like to take a moment to express our appreciation and give some real recognition for all the good work that you do. And because we just completed the year, I would like to acknowledge the top collectors for 2022. So in Northern California, Contra Costa Waste Services, Hayward Transfer Station, and Florin Perkins Public Disposal. And in Southern California, Bina Landfill, Marburg Industries, and American Reclamation. Thank you for all your excellent work. We really appreciate it. Okay. Next on the agenda is what is working and what is not working. And this is our opportunity to hear from you. So I want to open up the conversation so that you can give us your feedback, positive or negative, and share your experience, challenges, and best practices. If you would like to speak, if you would like to speak, please unmute yourself. And if you're not equipped with a microphone, please write your questions or comments in the chat box. I will make time to bring up any subject, but first I would like, like to get your feedback on the quarterly webinar. So we surveyed all of you and decided based on the responses to, to change the schedule from quarterly to biannual. So rather than a quarterly, quarterly webinar, we'll have a biannual webinar. And after today, our next drop-off site webinar will be in July. The majority of responses wanted a biannual schedule, but surprisingly high number wanted to continue with quarterly webinars. So we know there is value here for you, and we'd like to continue um, what's working. Um, so I'm hoping that you'll give us some input uh, about the webinar, what you would like to see continued or lessened. And then on the other hand, you're also welcome to give feedback or input on other topics or how the program is working for you in general. So I'm gonna open it up. Anyone like to um, comment or share their experience? I see somebody here who said he would like to see future projections. Um, so future projections of recycling rates or future projections of uh, potential drop-off sites. If you have more to share, that will give us a little more um, input. So there will still be quarterly reports and we still will check in um, every quarter. So we'll do our regular quarterly outreach and you'll turn in a quarterly report, but just the webinar will happen uh, two times a year. So here's a question. Is there any feedback or comments from Cal Recycle on the carpet program and how it is going? So, um, we are working closely with Cal Recycle. Um, we actually have our director online. If Thomas, you wanna answer anything about Cal Recycle here? Hi, Lisa. Hello, everyone. Um, there's a question in the chat you want, you'd like me to respond to? Yeah, it says, is there any feedback or comments from Cal Recycle on the carpet program and how it's going? Uh, yeah, so I'll answer that. I can tell you that the, the program is continuing. We are working with uh, Cal Recycle now as a, um, as, as a matter of business. We're working under a contingency plan while our uh, five-year plan is being reviewed and we've made some revisions for Cal Recycle's uh, consideration. But um, today and going forward, we are uh, managing the state's uh, carpet recycling program. Thanks, Thomas. All right, anybody, thoughts on the program, anything that's working for you, not working, any best practices you would like to share? All right, well, just, um, we will send out the dates for the next webinar in July, um, which will be July 20th. Um, at 11 o'clock, so do put that in your calendars. 
All right, this is your last moment for any questions or comments. Anyone? Yes, hey, Lisa? Uh, Lisa, this is, I'm sorry. This is. Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, <laughs> I, I just, Lisa, this is Grant Dunn from the Del Norte Regional Recycling and Transfer Station. I just, this question has probably come up before, but I just wanted to check in. Are the, the PowerPoints available the, uh, on the uh, CARE website? They are. So we um, include a recording that will be posted um, on the services page, and then we usually send out a PDF of the PowerPoint um, in a in an email uh, after in the next couple of days. All right. Much appreciated. Thank you. Absolutely. Hello. Is this making it through? Yes. Hi, this is Nicholas Minton at Marin Resource Recovery, and uh, I would like to make a comment. It seems like that time. And I just wanted to thank uh, Lisa, and then also Brennan Jensen, if she's still involved with the program for over the years. And uh, the graph that showed in the beginning shows the progress this program has made over the years. And I do hope that this thing gets resolved with the five-year program. Uh, markets take time. And CARE has been a great program for us and worked with us uh, since the beginning. We were right there. And uh, I really appreciate the hard work. And I do hope that it gets figured out um, for the future going forward. Thank you. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Hi, Lisa. Yes. It's Abby. Hi, Abby. Hi. Th thank you for that comment, Nick. That means a lot. Um, I just wanted to say, I don't remember if Thomas mentioned it, but we did resubmit our five-year plan um, on the 17th, and I believe it was posted yesterday for public comment. So uh, we are trying to resolve any deficiencies that were in the original plan and, and have resubmitted it for consideration. Thanks, Abby. Thanks for that update. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anyone else? All right. So it's time to come to our completion. Thank you, everyone, um, for all the good work you do out there, and have a great afternoon. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Great job. Take care. Take care. Yeah.